Greetings and welcome to this video regarding a question that came across my Facebook page on how to calculate the inverse tangent of a value without plugging it into some scientific calculator. Well, I've got two methods for you here. They're kind of related, but uh, I'm glad it came across my desk because I actually learned how to do this when I was in ninth grade with Mr. Prozik. So he taught us how to use tables and interpolation. So that's the first step here. So first off, here's a table and I got it from a NASA website so I hope it's pretty good and seemed to work out. If we wanted to find the tangent of an angle, say 35 degrees, here we would go to the angle 35, we'd look over here, see the tangent of 35 degrees, and it was 0 0.702, and we just plug that in. But what if we wanted the tangent of an angle that wasn't on this list? Maybe it was 52.48 degrees. Well, we would pick out these two angles that are on either side of it, and then look at these tangent values, and then plug them into a chart like this and use interpolation. Now, for tangent or sine, cosine, or any of these other functions that are continuous, yet they're curves, between two fairly close points, we can assume that it's linear. Now, there's going to be some error involved, but if we assume that it's linear, uh, between two close points, there probably will be minimal error and we can at least get close enough for our purposes. So then we bring this over into this table, assume that it's linear, and simply make a ratio. So the question again was two-thirds. So we're going to make that uh, 0 0.6667 here for argument's sake and where you need to find what angle this is. So we're going to be going the opposite direction. We know what the tangent is. We're trying to find out what the angle is. So it's an inverse tangent uh, function. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the difference between these two and then find the difference between these two and make that into a ratio and then set it equal to the difference between these two over the difference between these two. So the next step, now normally I'd be using uh, uh, my tablet and start writing it, but uh, I can't find my pen, so I'm going to have to just fill you in here using the spreadsheet. So next step, again, was finding this difference, 34 minus x and 34 minus 33. I started with 34 because I knew that 34 minus 33 would be 1 and that would make our calculations pretty easy. So 34 minus x is going to go over that. And then I did the exact same thing on the other side. 6745 minus 6667 right here and then 6745 minus 6494 here. So the, our next step is to evaluate those differences. So can't get any simpler than 34 minus x, but here we have 1. Then we uh, just did the arithmetic here and got this, did the arithmetic here and got this. Notice I didn't use any formulas for that. You should be able to do this on paper. So the next step is to set up the ratios. So we take 34 minus x, divide by 1, and 0078 minus 0.0251. Now this is going to be annoying. It would be long division of four decimal place numbers. Yeah, that's long and tedious, but uh, maybe you need to practice just as much as I do. So I will admit that I actually used a calculator, so oh well. So when I solve for that, I got 0 0.3108, and obviously this is simply 34 minus x. Solving for x is simply 34 minus 0 0.3108, and you end up with 33.6892, which is what we expected, 33.69, as was indicated in the question on Facebook. Now, from there, you can 
ask, well, you know, where'd you get this table from? And are there other tables like this? And the answer is yes, there certainly are. Uh, I actually have a, an entire book of tables of various types and other uh, formulas. And it looks very much like this. I actually have the 24th edition of the CRC standard mathematical tables. And so what you do here is that this entire half of the page is dedicated to 33 degrees. Now, it is broken up not by decimals, but by minutes, which are each 1 60th of a degree. I'm kind of glad that they went to decimals, but this is what I have. So, um, so just read this as 60th of a degree on the left hand side here. So if I wanted the tangent of 0.6667, I actually circled the wrong ones here. Uh, I'd go down to 0.66650 and 0.66692 and I'd realize that I had it was somewhere between 41 and 42 sixtieths of a degree. So if I simply so equals 41 divided by 60, that's 0.683, equals 42 divided by 60, and that's exactly 0.7. So obviously it's going to be around 0.69, just like we expected. And you could do that same interpolation uh, and get um, a more precise number down to five decimal places whereas uh, the other one was actually uh, to four decimal places, but this one would be even more precise because it was between 60ths, not um, full degrees. Okay, so now the next question is, where did these numbers actually come from? Who set this table up? And how can I set up my own table? Well, if you really are that ambitious, you can take each one of these values and go here to the series definition or calculation of the inverse tangent. Now this looks really really annoying here but it really boils down to this. You start with your x and you subtract uh, one-third of x cubed and add one-fifth of x to the fifth and so on. So each successive term in the series you go up two powers here in the exponent, you alternate minus and plus, and you go up to in the denominator each time as well. So the denominator should match the power, and so on. So it's, that's pretty simple there. So again, if we have x equals two thirds, here's the first term, the second term, and so on, and they keep getting smaller because of the power, and you have to add them up, but remember they're radians, and once we change that into the angle it's 33.69 so if you are very ambitious and you like doing a lot of hand calculations this is definitely the way to go uh, if on the other hand uh, you at least uh, want to appreciate what we did uh, in the days before our calculator this is most of what we did we would take these uh, numbers off the table and then simply use interpolation and get pretty much close enough. Okay, well, I hope that this was helpful to you and that this answers your questions. If you have any further questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Have a good day.